Hello friends, welcome back to another Nova Heights speed build. Today we are welcoming some American bison and some antelope into the barn section of Nova Heights. I hope you enjoy. So if you've been following along, you've been noticing that we spent a lot of time on the Africa section of Nova Heights, and I think it is time to look at something else. So this barn section was actually built before the Africa section was built. I was so excited about the Africa section that I had to uh, show you that first. So now it's time to go to the other side of the park, across from our capuchin monkeys and the uh, giant anteater habitat. And now we're gonna build the barn. It's gonna be your typical type of barn, except now we have American bison and we have the antelope, both found in North America, and they will be living together in this beautiful little habitat. I was fairly surprised with the outcome of this habitat. As you notice, there was a lot of learning that happened in the Africa section of our builds. And this build was actually before that. And I was very surprised with the way things turned out. Um, I think it was because I didn't think so much on this. I knew I wanted a barn section and I just kind of said, let me build a barn. And I feel like it came out very well for not putting too much thought into it. Um, I didn't use a lot of pieces and the mistakes that I made were very easily fixable very great for learning and just kind of like just just enjoying this build so I really liked it um, I didn't get crazy with the colors which probably helped me out a lot and the bugs that I had been uh, having issues with in other builds were not present for this build so it made things a lot easier So a few things you will notice about this particular build is that it is set off to the side, um, very not hidden by anything. There's no crazy paths that take guests over there. They are literally just walking around the middle attraction and they are just coming right here to this barn that is probably visible from the main entrance. Um, it is nothing special. I had actually intended on making an entire section of barn areas but after the wetlands pack came out i was a little inspired to build something else directly behind the barn area which i will make a video very soon i am so excited to show you that next section um partially because it it did get um a saturday uh, snapshot or was it a saturday screenshot um shout out from uh, planet zoo on twitter and I was so excited to hear that and I was so excited to build it and so I'm really excited to show you that. So the barn um, is its own own entity now with bison and antelope. It's so exciting. Um, I got to learn a lot about this little area. I built um, a little food section. I really just, uh, like most things, I'm inspired by my hometown and the barn that we had there filled with a bunch of things of course like chickens and stuff like that but we also had uh, tapers and they were um, for me it wasn't just like a normal barn so when I saw tapers I was like wow so they do have other types of animals in these barn settings so when I was thinking I wanted a barn I said what can I put in there that's not like a normal animal not something you would see in a normal barn uh, why not let's do bison they're big cows to me and um, antelope they work really well together so let's put those two in there for guests to enjoy they're not you know they're they're animals that can enjoy this area and they for the game they don't need a really high uh, fence level so it, it really just is like a normal 
Um, like if you were to walk up into an, a regular barn and you were to walk up to the fence to see the horses and cows on the other side, the fence wouldn't have to be extremely high. And that's the kind of look that we were going for in this particular build. So I feel like it really did come together. The animals will have the ability to go in and out of the barn. They will be able to sleep in the barn and then they will be able to eat outside the barn. So it is um, very, very neat little area for them to enjoy. I was able to build the fence a little customizable that way I can enjoy it and make it like kind of my own and then the pieces provided by the game were just kind of perfect for this build so that way it wasn't so complicated so we stuck with the wooden tin look and the wooden fence with the chain link to go all the way around it is very cute I like it. We add a lot of foliage into it to make it very special and ultimately I think it came out great. So if you are inspired to build something like this in your own park, just know I did not use any workshop pieces for this particular build. Everything is in game. You can find it all in the, um, the construction section of the, well I say construction, but pretty much every section of the base game and I believe the DLCs as well. Um, I do have all the DLCs, so I'm not sure which one these are all from, but if you are, uh, if you have them all, you are able to recreate this entire thing. If you have built a barn, I would love to see your barn. Please feel free to tag me on Twitter. Um, I love looking at the barn areas, they're so great. Um, if you don't already know, I grew up in the South. I was always around fields. I was around cows and horses all the time. So any type of barn area, it just, I like it. I really enjoy it. Um, barns have a very distinct smell and I'm not talking about the stinky smells. I'm just talking about the hay and the food and, um, you know, the stinky smells are part of it, but um, it just... You know, it's a very vivid image I can place in my head because I, I remember it so um, greatly from just my childhood. So if you grew up in a, um, in a southern area with a lot of fields and barns, then I'm sure you understand this completely. So right now we're just working on the keeper section of the park. Now there are these really neat little um, little construction pieces of food and like food boxes and, and bags and I believe if I'm not I'm probably gonna be wrong I want to say the European pack had that in there but um, regardless it was it's all available in the game but I just thought it was really cool that you're able to place this food it makes it look so real I will say I went back to play in Planet Coaster a little bit and I realized how spoiled we are when it comes to Planet Zoo because of the ability to build so many customizable things with so many pieces that are already in the game, which is absolutely amazing. Now, I will say Planet Coaster does have the um, Theme Maker's Toolkit, which people are able to create things from scratch, and that's really cool. Um, but when it came to creating stuff with in-game pieces, I was just so excited. Um, that this had so many pieces, so many awesome pieces. So you see, we were able to create all of this and it was just all part of the game. It's really amazing. Also for this particular section, I got really creative and really excited. I was like, I'm gonna build a gate. In real life, this gate would swing in and out, no problem. But in the game, it's a little different. So in the game, these pieces are barriers they can act as barriers for the animals so as I was building there were certain areas well, as I continued to build um, sometimes I would do stuff that would cause the animals to get sent back to the to the keepers gate which is something that happens when you change the terrain or the gate or the fence area they'll get boxed up and sent back to the keepers area and when I did that they were getting sent behind this fence this little gate area well they couldn't get out because the gate area was blocking them so they would literally just stay in their boxes you may see a little bit of that through this video and I quickly learned my lesson and so the gate will come off later so they can walk in and out um, yeah it was an oopsies but at least you know I figured it out sooner than later I was just kind of looking around and I said where are all the animals they're all gone figured it out Eureka
Now this really was the first time that I sat down and said like, don't make things so complicated for yourself. Take your time, you know, you know what a barn looks like, build the barn, don't get so complicated, use the pieces the way that's supposed to be used, and um, use the tools like the advanced movement tools and, you know, the option to select multiple things at once. Use all those options and, and don't make it so hard on yourself. I feel like we do that to ourselves all the time. Um, I think sometimes a lot of these tools get lost on us whenever we're building. So I definitely took a little bit of extra time on this one. Nothing's perfect, but that's okay. It doesn't need to be perfect to be to be wonderful and to be admired by you know yourself and the rest of the zoo community because we all know we love this game so much. Now I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do with the upper part of it. I kind of wanted it to be like an open air area. I even thought about putting certain things up there. I will say that it would be cool in the future if we got something like chickens, like barn animals, like chickens, because I would love to put like a coop area in the top that they could go up to. And it would be really cool to see like chickens sitting by a window in the barn area, you know? Um, I know that their focus is probably not on chickens. <laughs> But that's okay. I mean, some of us want some of the silliest animals, and I think every animal is super valuable to the game. So maybe one day we'll get chickens. I mean, they've come out with so many amazing animals. I, you know, it's a matter of time. Maybe we'll get some birds in the future. But it would be really cool to actually have these windows up here opened, and that way we could see these awesome chickens. I would love chickens. I think they'd be great chickens. So the American bison can be found on the continent of North America, usually within Canada and the United States. The IUCN has declared them to be uh, near threatened and it has the ZPD actually has some good information about how they were uh, so close to extinction in the 19th century because they were hunted. So now they're um, back to a stable, um, a stable number in the wild but still face uh, threats like habitat loss. So once again, being very mindful of the things that we use on a daily basis and making sure that we um, only use what we need and we don't affect the environment in the process. So that way, you know, these American bisons, they're, they're literally in our back, backyard and we have to take care of them, you know? Some other fun facts from the Zoopedia um, are that bison are actually the largest land animal in North America. They can run 35 miles per hour when they're charging at full speed. They have poor eyesight, but have excellent hearing and great sense of smell. Um, the male calves born earlier in the breeding season are more likely to grow up to be a dominant bull. That's cool. And um, bison have been observed rubbing themselves against strong smelling trees such as cedar and pine, believed to be a deterrent to biting insects. How cool. Those facts are in the Zoopedia, which as usual, if you ha have the game, it's in the game. You can check it out. If you don't have the game, you are more than welcome to go to planetzoo.fandom.com has all that information on there it is super fun it has some really cool pictures on there as well um, very fun now they uh in the game it is said that they can uh, have it they can cohabitate with the prairie dogs and the pronghorn antelope for this we have put the pronghorn antelope in there with them maybe one day we'll add the prairie dogs but as for the pronghorn antelope they are um found in North America and were found in the standard edition of Planet Zoo. So you can usually find them in the United States or Canada and they are under the status of least concern. Um, so they are doing just fine. However, we do want to always be mindful because any species that is least concerned can easily go up onto the threatened list within a blink of an eye if we're not careful about what we're doing some super fun facts about these uh, pronghorn antelopes are even though they are called antelopes they are closely related to giraffes and okapis and they are considered the second fastest land animal after the cheetah running up to about 61 miles per hour um, they can run at high speeds for much longer than a cheetah though which is pretty interesting i believe a cheetah can only run that fast for like uh, like a minute or two 
helping those pronghorns um, run and continue to run um, at that speed, they have larger hearts and lungs, light bones, and shock absorbent hooves, which allow them to, um, to move so quickly for a long period of time. And these are actually very surprising. Um, I'm just, I was very surprised just now I read that uh, even though they can jump up to six meters in one bound, they actually prefer to crawl underneath obstacles rather than jump over them. I wonder why. I, I wonder if it has something to do with just the idea that, you know, maybe they can save some energy if they don't jump. Maybe there's less risk because if they were to jump and something was to be like flimsy, they could get hurt. I don't know. I wonder if that's something they even, or if they're just like me and they just would rather not jump. Lots of fun facts. As always, check out the Zoopedia. Um, it's really valuable. Uh, if you are like me, I want to learn as much as I can about these animals. Uh, the game is great, but being able to have all of this fascinating information right at our fingertips, it is great. And I think it really is a gem when it comes to learning about conservation and playing a game at the same time. Like Frontier, you did it. This is like the ultimate conservation nerd game like I absolutely love it and I love being able to learn about these animals and not only that but you know just being exposed to them in the game and you know, that's some that's more exposure than some people will ever get to any of these animals and you know good graphics looks great I absolutely love it I I think it's great so um, learn about these animals they're wonderful take the, take some time and learn about like every time you build a habitat like learn about one of the animals that you're building about just learn everything you can you know if you go have a library go learn about them in the library learn about them online it is it's so valuable you never know like you never know when you're next you're gonna find your next favorite animal so um i would say i if i had to pick one i'd pick the bison personally um but yeah my favorite animal for this one would be the bison let's continue the build so we are working on our custom fence and by custom i mean we are putting a fence down and we are covering up the pieces with other pieces but you know hey you know start small you, ain't, you don't have to build you don't have to build a house out of little logs in the game right away you could you know start from scratch so um just some reminders you know you're gonna build these fences and a lot of things are gonna have to be turned and twisted and you know, don't get over overworked, overstressed. You can easily maneuver these fences. Um, once you build your custom pieces over it, you can adjust these fences to the exact uh, way that you want it. So, you know, utilize those tools so that way you're not working harder. You know, work smarter, not harder. Cover up the little uh, poles. You know, if something doesn't line up perfectly, you can easily move it just a little bit. Don't overwork yourself, okay? Now, if we wanted to look at, uh, you know, some future builds with the barn section, maybe um, adding a back section that people can like walk around. Um, just having an extended barn area would probably be really cool um, as far as this little area is concerned. You know, we do have now, we have the bison, we have the poghorn antelope. You know, it would be really cool if we can have a different animal, completely different, that can still be from North America, still be something that would fit into the barn theme. Um, that would be really fascinating to have and something fun just to kind of, just to kind of um, expand our barn area. So it's not just kind of like a one and done type of habitat. I think for now, but we'll just leave it like this because the the exhibit or the habitat that we built behind the barn that you will see in a later video is actually super um, cool and it is, I want to say, um, wetland themed and I feel like it is awesome so we would probably need to maybe save the barn idea for a later video maybe if other you know animal packs come out that fit the more barn theme then maybe we'll do a bigger barn in the future but for now I think we're just gonna stick with this one unless you have some cool ideas feel free to leave them in the comments so that way we can you know upgrade and make cool things we love cool things every day 
cool things, you know? Like I said, chickens. I love chickens. Maybe there's a mod out there with chickens. I currently don't have any mods, so um, if you know of a good mod with chickens, let me know. <laughs> Now there will be some cool little like other things that you may see in this build. Um, I had to adjust a lot, so I kind of use the the um, the waterproof glass technique. I wanted to build a little water trough for the uh, animals to drink out of, but I was having trouble with the lay uh, the terrain and it wasn't working the way I want it to. It looked really cool and you may see like a little glimpse of it in just a few moments, but I was still having trouble with the area around it. As you can see, it's right there at the bottom of the screen. It worked, but I forget what happened that caused me not to want to keep it there. Um, I don't remember what it was, but we do eventually take it out and I use it as a planter later on. Um, and I just, you know, like I said, you know me with the foliage, I just like to overdo it. I, I took that that trough, I moved it over, I made a planter out of it, it looked great, but um, we are going to add the little mud pit, which I believe does not stay very long, and we added another area for them to eat, and then we added a bunch of foliage. Even behind the back of this habitat, we added a lot of foliage, so it really does set up the area for the next habitat um, very well. I feel like it was perfectly themed. Um, after you'll see it in the ending clips, I did accidentally get some of the plants inside of the building, but I mean, I think we've all done that a few times. So, um, definitely just a few things that you notice now, they will be gone in just a few moments. Uh, but I think it still came out okay. So I'm not that worried about it. I would, like I said, I was having these issues with the gates and the people and where I was going to put the um, animals and them having traversable areas. Those were all things that I thought I had under control, but I just, um, I'm still learning. I'm still catching on. And by the time I had gotten this far in the build, I was like, wow, this build lasted forever. So I'm, I had to, I had to wrap it up. So you can see we're getting things done. That little area right there where they're, you know, that was the only place they could they could walk. So I had to get rid of the gate. I just turned it around and made it look like it was open. So it worked out. It worked out really well. So I enjoyed it. Um, we are going to be ending this video pretty soon. So if you have any questions, comments, concerns, things that you want to chat about, if you like this video, make sure to subscribe, tell a friend, something, um, whatever you want to do. Uh, if you have any uh, any pictures or anything that you want to share of your barn area, you know what to do. Twitter, Twitch, YouTube, whatever you want to do. But absolutely, we're going to see some beautiful bison videos in just a moment, and I hope you enjoy the rest of this build.